Yes, Keith O'Brien from Game Day, Eastern Connecticut, and the day of the, the sports doctors here. Keith, we we welcome you to our show. Thank you for coming. Noah, Mark, thanks for having me. Noah, you got car troubles? I came from the other end of the state. <laughs> Way to get my mileage voucher. You're talking about car keys and car <laughs> yeah. troubles. But, yes. guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, you Boy. came down from Niantic, right? Oh, yes, it's a long you. ride yes, to the construction on 95, yeah. but that's a conversation for another show. There's never construction yes. in Connecticut. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. But let, let's talk about that that part of the state, uh, which, you know, is your certainly your expertise. You're seeing it all the time. And in high school football, it uh, the, the the southeast is rising again am I right yeah you know the whole eastern part of the state kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit because it's not amongst the big boys in the state or it's in centrally located but there's a lot of good football going on down there and a couple of teams we'll take a look at you know obviously with the uh, the Fitch Falcons 4-0 off to a hot start just a big win last week over NFA uh, Killingly Redmond 4-0. Chad Neal has that team ready to roll. And we see Fitch right here. This is one of those teams that is finally starting to get it and gel under third-year coach uh, Mike Ellis. They run a triple option. And, guys, that is not a gimmick offense. That is a very, very complicated, tough, tough offense to run. Junior quarterback Tyler Nellity rolling that offense very well. Yeah, I want you to tell us a story, Keith. You were telling us earlier. I want you to share it with everybody because the Fitch guys, they felt a little slighted that everyone was kind of giving the nod to NFA before the season started. Yeah, I've been on a couple of different shows here and there, and, I, you know, I picked NFA to buzz through the ECC, and you just saw him right there, Hollis Scott, number 22. NFA lost to Fitch this past week, and he grabbed me on the sidelines. And he said, hey, sports doctor, weren't you the guy that picked NFA to buzz <laughs> through the ECC? How do you like us now? Fitch 4-0, guys, and I'll tell you right now, don't tell us to Mike Ellis, but in prime position to run the table and get back to the state playoffs now. Well, no, and certainly no class, uh, no coach wants to hear that, especially about halfway through, or not even halfway through the season, but you might be right. Um, and, and not only running through the that part of the state, the, the crossover, the ECC yep. now with the, with the SEC and the FCAC and those crossover games, they're really... They're, they're serving notice. Well, I think that all the schools are beefing up their schedules a little bit. You talked about Fitch. You know, they beat you know, Notre Dame at West Haven in week two. Um, they've got Brantford coming off the bye week on Friday the 13th. So a lot of these teams are committed, you know, to playing the teams in the other end of the state. And, you know, NFA has to carry the flag for that because they've got an absolutely brutal schedule. You know, they played Xavier yes. out of the gate. Uh, they beat Xavier on the road. They lost a tough game at home to Cheshire. Cheshire but yep. things won't get any easier for the Wildcats as they will take on uh, West Haven coming oh, off of their break. And again, game. that's a huge, huge game. And it's funny because West Haven plays Cheshire this week. So is that a trap game for the Blue Knights ahead in two weeks? It won't be for the Wildcats because, again, they're coming off of a tough, tough loss against Fitch. They're looking to get back into the win column. Well, you've got those teams playing very well. A team that is kind of down a little this year is New London, right? Yeah, New London's going to go through some growing pains this year. They're very talented, but, you know, no senior leaders on that team for Juan Roman. His second year there, you know, gone is, is uh, his, you know, son. his son is yeah. playing right down the road at Yale. Uh, Melquan Gomez is a senior quarterback. So he's got, some, he's got a sophomore quarterback in Owen George. You know, he's only made, what, four career starts at quarterback. Some talented players around him, but I think some growing pains for, for New London this year. If you're going to get him, you might as well get him this year because that team won't be down for very long. A lot of talent there. And yeah. in Class M, and, and that's, that's that middle class that sometimes I think throughout the state people kind of forget about, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't forget about Killingly, right? Well, listen, Killingly, obviously from the northern part of the state, guys, this team has been 9-1 and one the last two years. Chad Neal has won state playoff games. He's been to the state semifinals the last two seasons, and he has loaded this year. Spencer Lockwood, 958 yards in four games at tailback. He's, he's on pace to run for 2,400 yards for back-to-back -back seasons, and he could crack the top 10 all-time in the state of Connecticut in rushing. Chad Neal, again, they're run happy. And we just have to see how they do against a team maybe with a little bit of speed and can throw the ball. But, Chad, what Killingly does, they do very, very well. So I've been following just on paper. I haven't seen uh, Killingly, nor have I seen Fitch other than highlights. But I've been voting him in my top ten. Yeah, I've been well in the top 15 anyway. way. See, every now and then I need a little pat. You, on the and back. today you really do. <laughs> and M's wide open this year. You've got St. Joe's who's down at S. That's right. And you've it's got kind of ripe for the taking. Hill House, year, right? it's ripe for the taking. Yeah, yeah. You know, and why not Killingly? They say if winning is a process and you've got to lose before you can win, well, Killingly's done every bit of that. Nine and one in the regular season, 
trip to the state semifinals the last two years. How about a trip to the final this year for Chad Neal and the Redmen? You'd like to see it. Well, yeah. tell, us, tell us quickly about what you're doing with the new London Day because you guys are streaming games. So it's a newspaper, but you can go to the website. Yep. You're streaming games there. You're part of that, and you're also part yep. of your podcast there. Yeah, I'm part of Game Day, yep. uh, the day.com. Uh, you know, also with my, you know, my partner, Casey O'Neill, Mike DeMauro, our director, Peter Wappy. You know, we do a Wired Zone project, which gives you an inside NFL uh, look at sideline with the coaches and the players. We also stream high school basketball games as well. Um, we're venturing out this year, and I'm doing some volleyball and some field hockey. Nice. Yeah, Talk some, about lacrosse. having a wonderful year, right? Oh, Stonington Bears field hockey. That, that's, a, that's a classic program. They, they are always a power in that part of the state. Yeah, Coach Jenna Tuccio has that team ready for success. And the funny thing about field hockey is an entirely different game on grass surface versus the turf. Oh, yeah. Much faster on the turf. Oh, sure. Stonington Bears look real good this year, guys. Well, well, we had some stone at the video. I thought we, we, we might pop that up, but just in case we, we I was going to say, if you could play it on the turf all the time, all the better, because you'd like to see some scoring and, and little, well, you that, know, that quicker does action. speed up the yes, game. Yes, we like um, that. So give us, uh, down the road, what, what, what do you think will happen football-wise with, like, two or three of those teams that we've talked about? Well, I, you know what? NFA is going to be a bit of a potluck team for me because they're 2-2 two and two right now, and their season can go either way. They can jumpstart their season with a win against West Haven, kind of like they did last year when they beat Staples late in the year. Mm -hmm. Put them back in a position to be 8-2. and two. So, NFA, we're gonna, I think that game coming off the bye week will tell a tale for the rest of the way. Uh, Where is it? Is it, it is at West Haven, okay. and not an easy uh, place to play. No. Um, obviously, Fitch, I'm in their corner. I could see Fitch going undefeated. Again, they've still got to play against New London, who you never know with the New London team, and a 3-1 and one, uh, East Lime team, too, is back in the mix a little bit. So, But Fitch is prime for success this year. Again, got the tougher games out of the way. That's what I was just going to say. They've, they've played the toughest part they of their schedule. they played the toughest part yeah. of their schedule. That yeah. game against NFA last week is going to really – yeah. boost votes for their confidence this year. But I'm going to keep my eye on NFA game against West Haven. Uh, Fitch strongly think that they're going to be undefeated. And again, I, it wouldn't shock me if Chad Neal had Killingly, you know, in a position to win a state championship. All right, uh, let's bring on the eastern part of the state. Get them uh, get him playing in some of these yeah. big football games uh, on, on, on championship weekend. Yeah, and I think it's tremendous, you know, for not only the league, but the state to see some of the talent on the other end. You yeah. know, Killingly, you know, NFA. Fitch, East Lime, you know, Stonington, you know, Stonington and Westerly game, a lot of tradition there. Sure. I, I think it's forgotten about a little bit because you were so wrapped up in a new Canaan and Darien and Southington, you know, and Sonia and some of these schools. But there's a lot of tradition, you know, in southeastern Connecticut. And people forget. Oh, those Thanksgiving people forget, Day games. People forget then, about Fitch football back in the late, you know, 1990s and 2000s when Mike Emery was winning state championships and Fitch was ranked number one in the state. Well, let me just say this because I'm going to pat myself on the back or pat ourselves on the back one more time. We've done our best to get up to the eastern part of the yes. state and cover cover a lot of that stuff. Sure. Thank you for all the work yes. that you do. Oh, I your, appreciate you guys your, having me on. Your passion for it comes through in spades. So we, we, we love to see that. Keep up the good work at the at the day. We'll be looking for your podcast. Guys, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Our minutes. pleasure. The Sports Doctor.